Hey friends, it's Chris Swanson back with Digital Confirmation um, Lessons here for you. This is from Wednesday, November 1st, and uh, we're going to talk about um, the Old Testament and getting into the Bible. And so things that uh, you need today, pen or pencil, something to write with, you need your Bible, of course. And lastly, some kind of a light source candle if it's okay for you to have open flames otherwise um little tea light um or lamp or flashlight anything that reminds us of the holy spirit at work here among us as we learn and grow together so i'm going to give you a chance to get that and then i'm going to share my screen and we are going to dig into this lesson of what it means to get into the bible so let's go all right, here we go. So getting into the Bible, um, this is again, if you are a sixth or seventh grader this year. Um, so we're starting in the Old Testament, which is the beginning of your um, of your Bible. Um, we did have a guest speaker. I don't have her here with us right now. Uh, Marla Holt, you'll see there on the left side of the picture, and that's her family. Um, Marla came to talk to us uh, briefly because she is a writer. Um, she interviews people and she tells people stories and she she tells stories in general for different publications, um, magazines, newspapers, um, sometimes even colleges and things like that. And uh, we had her talk about what it's like to be a writer. How do, does she interview someone? How does she tell their story? And what audience is she speaking into? Um, she wrote a piece for, recently for Wired Magazine about artificial intelligence. So she really wrote that, um, you know, with, for people with a tech mindset. Um, but then she shared that she took that information about artificial intelligence and translated it into another piece, rewrote it for Scholastic, which of course is a magazine for elementary, you know, younger readers, younger people. Um, and so her audience for that was very different, even though the content was very similar. And we asked her to come. I asked her to come to speak to our classes because uh, this is a very similar thing um, that happened with the Bible. So you may or may not know the Bible is not just one book. In fact, it's a collection of 66 different books, and they're written by different authors across different time periods. Uh, and also written for different audiences. So if you've ever been reading the Bible and you got confused, it might be because you weren't the intended audience of the time, and maybe you need to learn something about that community. Um, maybe we don't know enough about the author and what they were trying to convey. Um, other things that were happening in history at that period of time might uh, help us interpret what God is trying to say to us through those scriptures. So, all right, that's kind of our first nugget. Thanks to Marla. Now, as we talk about getting into the Bible, there's a big question here, and it's, what has the Bible got to do with me? Uh, you know, it's, Jesus lived 2,000 years ago, so the newest stuff is 17 or 1,800 years. I mean, that doesn't seem really relevant to a person in 2023. And the other stuff is even older than that. I mean, gosh, what are we talking about? Well, it's a good question, and we want to explore that question. So we have a few keywords that will help us. First thing is Scripture. Scripture, as you can see here on your screen, it's writing that is sacred or special or holds certain um, meaning to a religious group. And for Christian people, followers of Jesus, the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament are considered scripture. Canon is a word that means it's the list of the books that authorities agree is scripture. Sorry about that. Um, interpretation means it's the finding, making, or sharing of meaning. It's impossible to read and understand something without interpreting it. So our Bible, you're reading it, and your life experiences 
um, and the community which we live in or where you grew up, all of that uh, creates an interpretation in, in your brain and uh, in your life, how you are reading and interpreting those scriptures. Um, it means something slightly different for, for all of us. Uh, translation is a restatement of words from one language to another. And unless you're reading Hebrew or Greek, you are reading a translation of the Bible. So you might not know that, but those were the original languages that the Bible was written into. And 500 years ago, a guy named Martin Luther, he was German, and he felt that the Bible should be available in the language of the people. So he wanted a Bible written in German um, so that German people, especially peasants and poor people who didn't have access to education, they could hear and understand um, the words of scripture, the words of God in their own language. Um, and there are better or worse translations out there. Friends, if you, most of you have this Bible and this translation is NRSV. We use that here at Trinity because um, two things, it's clear and easy to understand. And secondly, the meaning um, is pretty accurate to the original meanings. So uh, we want clarity. We want to be able to, to understand it, but we also want to know what it means and what it meant back then. Okay. So I mentioned this question, what's the Bible got to do with me? And um, I want to share a very quick personal story. Um, when I was in college, um, I got a call from, uh, from my sister that somebody she knew um, from back home, um, had, uh, made the decision to end their own life. And that was very sad, of course. Um, and so I happened to be in my college dorm room. I happened to have a Bible nearby. I don't remember why that was the case. Um, and I didn't know a Bible verse to, to look up, but I happened to open it and I opened to the middle of the Bible and this verse, Psalm 62, eight, uh, was right there on the page, and it said, "Pour out your hearts before Him, O God. Uh, trust in the Lord, because the Lord is God is our refuge. And refuge means a, a, a safe place, a place to go in a time of trouble. And that felt in that moment um, exactly what the Holy Spirit needed us to hear. So, the thing about the Bible, friends, uh, throughout it, you can find everything." You can find every range of emotion, uh, every type of person represented um, and, and experiences that they've gone through or struggled through. Um, it's there. And God uses that to speak into our lives, um, to comfort us, it, it, like with my sister, but also to encourage us, to guide us, uh, uh, to lead us forward. And so that in a nutshell is what does the Bible have to do with you? I hope that you realize especially this year and throughout your confirmation journey, that it really, even though it's old, uh, it really does have something to do with your life and it can speak to you in those moments. So if you would join me in praying this prayer together, uh, I'll do the leader part if you do the group part. Um, and, then, uh, and then there'll be a little bit of small group time after that, okay? Okay, so we will do this prayer and then I have um, some small group uh, work for you to do. Lord God, you lift us through the Holy Scriptures. Thank you for this gift. You inspired everything in the Bible. Thank you for this gift. Scripture gives us hope and encouragement in our journey of faith. Thank you for this gift. Scripture shows us examples of how to follow you. Thank you for this gift. Give us the desire to learn more about you through scriptures. Thank you for this gift. And all God's people said, Amen. So uh, our small group or your, your work from home material. Mm, oh, shoot. Hold on. Um. Okay, so those uh, small group work from home materials. Um, on our website, there's this page. You'll see it says a short guide to personal Bible reading. I'd like you to take a few minutes to look through this. 
uh, it has some really great stuff about um, as you get started and what you're really looking for, plus just the basic instruction up here in the box of, you know, how do you look up the book names and the chapter number and the verse number. Um, and we're going to reference the bottom part two is great tips on how to mark up your Bible. So ways, you know, you can highlight or just put some other little notes there. So I want you to look up um, this scripture uh, from the book of John, chapter one, verses one to 14. Read it once and then reference this guide. Use these symbols down at the bottom um, to mark up that bit of scripture um, with with whatever you think, either something that's important to you, new idea, things like that. Um, and read that scripture even one more time. So this might be your second, third, or even fourth time reading that section. Um, and the last thing, write down questions that you have. There might be things that you want to learn more about or something you would ask someone else, me or a pastor or even a parent, and then close with a prayer. And with that in mind, friends, take care, be well, Remember that you are loved and we will see you again soon. Goodbye.